Hello, everybody, and welcome to today's show. This is Molly McCord, and thank you for joining me as I share with you a special series of short stories that are designed to help you find your own answers, connect with your own wisdom, and know that you're not alone as we move through these big, powerful changes and energies. I'm going to read for you a chapter from Modern Heroine Soul Stories. And this is a book uh, that was published in 2017. I worked on it in 2016, 2017. And it is a collective, collaborative book with 24 women sharing some of their deepest, most personal life lessons and stories. And they are sharing with you their own wisdom, what they learned, how they grew, what they came to understand. And I believe that this storytelling is impactful and powerful in helping us feel connected to one another and to guide one another as needed. So I'm going to read this short story. Uh, Again, it's from Modern Heroine Soul Stories. 24 real women soar higher to greater healing, forgiveness, trust, and strength. This chapter is called She Begins Hearing Her Soul by Isabella Aponte, and it is narrated by myself, Molly McCord. I attended an all-girls Catholic high school in Philadelphia. We wore maroon jumpsuits that were forbidden to rise above the knee. My mom is a devout Catholic with a large portrait of the Virgin Mary hanging in our dining room. Crosses hung above every door. My father's mentor and role model was a Catholic priest. Not only did I have to confess my sins to Father George on a weekly basis, but I was also scolded if I ever missed church or even showed up late. I was not given any option on what to believe or how to live my life other than the teachings of the Catholic Church. It was the religion of my family and therefore my religion as well. Even after spending eight years at a Catholic elementary school, I still had so many unanswered questions. What if I wasn't sure what I believed exactly? Why were my doubts met with reprimands as opposed to information? I remember going home after an especially hard day in religion class and telling my parents that I was unsure if I really wanted to be a Catholic. While they were, real, while they were extremely disappointed, they were more baffled than anything. They never expected me or my sisters to question their lifelong beliefs. What I really wanted was just to have options in what I learned about life, options about what I believed, and options on how I lived my life. The summer after my senior year of high school, I counted out the days until I could move to New York City and begin my freshman year of college. I had decided that there was no other place for me than New York. I had visited the city often and fell in love with the enormous buildings, the unforgettable skyline, and the massive amounts of people moving quickly through the streets. Every part of Manhattan made it seem as if it were a place people came to live out their dreams. I had it all planned out. I would quickly immerse myself into the New York City life and live out my dream of becoming a writer. However, when I finally moved there, all of the things I loved about New York quickly blurred into the background as I felt everything about myself changing. The enormous buildings suddenly made me feel much smaller. The skyline seemed to become the symbol of an intangible dream. So many people made me feel extremely lonely. I felt as if New York had failed me. There was too much change all at once for my 18-year-old self to handle. But what I did not realize was that I was just truly beginning to unearth a part of me I never knew existed. Through all of this confusion, I threw myself into my favorite courses in college, which were English, and to my surprise, religion. This was my first experience of religion being presented in an objective way. It was not shoved down my throat, and I was not forced to blindly believe anything. Learning about all the different religions and beliefs of the world really began to open my mind. I actually wanted to invest time in what I believed in and figure out how my beliefs could affect my way of life. I visited churches, synagogues, Buddhist temples, religious exhibits, 
and much more just to learn about the different ways of experiencing life. As one part of my dream seemed to be falling apart, who I was and what I believed began to be pieced together. This was the very first time that my eyes were open to the fact that I had control over who I wanted to be and how I lived my life. It was not until college that I began to learn about all the ways that I could become a more aware human being. Gaining the knowledge of all these different beliefs and each religion's perspective of the soul is what opened me up to my own soul's journey. I spent many nights on my twin-sized bed up on the top bunk in my small dorm room that I shared with four girls, reflecting on everything I had been learning while debating whether or not to return home. There was this feeling in the pit of my stomach telling me that just after three months in New York City, it was okay to go home. Just do what will make you happy, I told myself. In some small way, I knew that this was not just a gut feeling. There was something inside of me that I needed to become more aware of, to care for, and to listen to. After returning home to Philadelphia, I felt as if I was starting from square one. I applied to Temple University, where I could commute to and from school. Since I was spending so much time at home, I also began to explore my changing neighborhood. My once small residential neighborhood was becoming a booming business area with a new store or restaurant popping up almost every week. In the midst of all this neighborhood change, one of my favorite shops was still there. It's called the Little Candy Shop. I vividly remember entering the small shop for the first time in the summer of 2010. Bright pink walls, vintage mirrors, and every candy you could imagine was on display in glass cases. The smell of chocolate would linger the entire time you were in the little candy shop. Of all those enticing qualities, Haley, the owner, was what stood out the most to me. My first impression of her was that I had never met someone quite as inviting and charming as she was. She had long black hair, a bright smile, and she just stood out in that shop. But it was her personality that drew me in, along with many other customers, to return back to the store regularly. I visited the store often and grew extremely connected to Haley. Every time I stopped by, I would silently hope it was a slow day so that she and I could just talk. She would tell me about her life, and although she was only 24 years old, it had seemed as if she had already lived so many lives. She had been through numerous trials and tribulations, yet she was truly one of the most optimistic and selfless people I had ever met. One of her finest qualities was being a great listener. I must selfishly admit that most days it was her listening to me my stories, and the struggles I was facing in my life. Then she would offer advice and sometimes when needed, just a hug. She knew exactly how to respond. She brought more life into my spiritual journey. After leaving New York, I felt as if my spiritual journey had become stagnant and I needed a new way to satiate my soul's curiosity. Haley was the one who helped me take the next big leap to continue my education which helped me reconnect with my soul. She offered advice on matters she had dealt with in her own life that would help me recognize the overwhelming feeling in the pit of my stomach that I continued to endure. She guided me to read incredible books that allowed my brain to understand my gut feelings. These books helped me make sense of my search for more as well as gain a better sense of self and consciousness. I became sure that these feelings and my thirst to learn other ways of living were both the voice of my soul. I can now identify it, and I was listening. The more I learned, the more I wanted to know about the soul, the self, and consciousness. I wanted to become my own guide and started to do my own work. I began to take care of my soul through unapologetically listening and making decisions based on what was best for me, my gut, and my feelings. This is the path I am still on. A pivotal moment came when I was able to share my journey with my younger sister. 
She had been undergoing her own personal passages, which had taken her to more places than the average 20-year-old may experience. She continuously inspires me to carry on with my own path just by vivaciously and fearlessly living out her own dreams. Being able to have someone to share, relate, and turn to have urged me to share my story with others. My journey of the soul is truly just beginning. There are still many times that I am tempted to ignore my soul's yearnings because what it longs for is scary or not in my plan. However, I take myself back to when I was sitting on that top bunk when I made the decision that altered my complete sense of self and my beliefs. Choosing to leave New York and return to Philly honored my quest to listen and connect with my soul. I have come to realize that my discovery of the soul was a domino effect of choices. Sometimes we continue to wait and look for these huge lightning strike moments to make a change in our lives without even realizing that it can be the small talks with a friend or reading a few soul-searching books that can lead to a transformative and culminating process of greater self-realization. So that is Isabella's chapter in Modern Heroine Soul Stories and the simple ways that we can connect with ourselves and learn to trust ourselves and hear, hear those deeper messages. And as she said, she just feels like she's beginning and what an amazing journey it is to begin hearing these parts of ourselves for the very first time. So I hope you enjoyed this chapter. And I'll be back to share additional chapters with you, hoping that they are timely and the right messages for you. And you can find out more about this book below the video as well. Thank you for joining me, and I'll be back here soon.